good morning, everyone. It's, it's great to be here and great to see so many um, friendly faces and people that have really contributed to the, to the topic of the session that we're going to have um, this morning. I also want to talk, uh, thank Vishal, um, who's supported both of us uh, in trying to get this program together. Uh, and in particular, Sophia, who's actually done all the hard work. So I, I confess I have done very little. Um, but Sophia really and, and Vishal really helped put this program together. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to hand straight over to Sophia. Sophia's going to tell us a little bit about, you know, what the session uh, topic is today. Um, also, the, the talks and the presenters that we're going to hear. Um, and also the format of the, the session this morning. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and over to Sophia. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. And this is a very exciting time for us because together we're honored to be kicking off the first scientific session of Breakthrough Discuss this year with the search for technosignatures from space. So to give a little bit of background for those of you who don't work in the SETI or search for extraterrestrial intelligence field, we often will spend our time theorizing about technosignatures or some astronomically observable sign of technology made by some non-human extraterrestrial agent. Technosignature searches are a part of astrobiology, complementary to and in conversation with more traditional biosignature search methods. And at this point, it's sort of uncertain which of those techniques is go going to lead to the first detection of non-terrestrial life. When I say technosignatures, this can include many things. It could include radio communications, laser beacons, structures around other stars or stellar remnants like Dyson spheres, or even artifacts within our own stellar neighborhood or solar system. So despite the breadth of those approaches under the SETI banner, one thing remains the same. All of them require us to first collect messengers from space, usually photons, but sometimes other approaches as well, using instrumentation that we've engineered specifically for astronomical observation. And depending on the wavelength of those photons, these instruments may be constructed on the surface of the Earth with minimal interference from Earth's own atmosphere, or for some other wavelengths or projects that require extreme precision and accuracy, observation from Earth's surface isn't gonna cut it. We have to probably count that as a good thing, all in all, because that same effect protects us from high energy radiation and particles from space. So kind of fundamental to our own life on this planet, but can interfere with our astrobiology sometimes. So therefore, some astronomy and correspondingly, some technosignature searches are already being done with space-based instruments such as TESS and JWST, which have been mentioned already today. In the meantime, ground-based observations are encountering new challenges in the form of interference from our own human technology, which is particularly problematic for searches for technosignatures, where we're looking for a mission from technology. So this can come in many forms, Light pollution from cities limits the functioning of optical telescopes. Satellite mega constellations are leaving streaks in sky survey images. And the proliferation of human radio technology, things that we use every day and sometimes take for granted, like GPS or Bluetooth or cell service, uh, are scattering millions of hits throughout every new SETI search, providing all of these false positives while we're trying to do these searches for life in the universe. Uh, there are many approaches, strategic and algorithmic and even policy-based, that are being developed to deal with the growing levels of interference from the Earth's surface, but it's also being recognized that, at least for now, one solution to this problem might be to take our searches beyond the Earth's surface uh, into space. And these space-based observations open up new opportunities for wavelength coverage, for precision, for interference excision, but they also come with increased cost and different technical challenges than building something on the surface of the Earth. Luckily for us, cohorts of experts are working to tackle those challenges, and we are very lucky to be able to present some of those experts today as part of session one. So I'll talk through some of the speakers in the session, and each speaker will speak for 20 minutes. There's going to be three talks, 
and then a break, and then three more talks. And then there's going to be a panel discussion where you can ask all your questions that have built up over that time to the full panel of speakers that are presenting today. So uh, with that, I will go ahead and introduce our slate of speakers for today, and then we'll get started. So first, we will hear from Hector Socas Navarro from Astrofisica de Canarias, who will provide an overview of dedicated technosignature mission concepts setting the stage for what kind of instrumentation and surveys are needed to push the technosignature field forward. Then, Su Ching Cheng from NASA JPL will present the immense opportunity present in performing astronomical observations from the lunar far side, a prime location for both technosignature searches and other uh, astronomy goals, such as cosmology. However, given that most of the interference that we're trying to avoid comes from human technology, the wave of interest in the moon is bringing with it many of the issues that we're struggling with on Earth, both technical, things like interference, and political. Alana Krolikowski from Missouri s and will address the complexity of preserving key sites for uh, scientific purposes in this new and interesting case where those key sites are non-terrestrial. Now, the moon is not the only place from which we can observe the universe. Mary Knapp, from MIT will discuss the opportunities for exploring the low frequency radio sky with earth orbiting instruments such as CubeSats, potentially opening up a new part of wavelength parameter space for technosignature searches and astronomy in general. Then we'll have Joe Lazio from NASA JPL who will shift the conversation a bit closer to home within our own solar system, looking for technosignatures and highlighting that there's still much space to search even within our own stellar neighborhood. And finally, we have already discovered two interstellar interlopers within our own solar system. While Oumuamua and Borisov are both consistent with natural objects, they raise questions about the future of finding and characterizing comets, asteroids, and potential technosignature artifacts that come from beyond our solar system. Daryl Seligman from MIT will wrap up the session remotely by joining us with an overview of the fascinating developing field of interstellar objects. So with that, we hope you enjoy the session and that the session gets you to thinking and, dare I say, discussing the opportunities of technosignature searches from space. And I would like to welcome Hector Socas Navarro to the stage to kick us off. Thank you. Thank you.